Om Tat Sat. My humble prostrations to the all-pervading Brahman or God, to my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotir Mayanandji Maharaj, to Sage Narada and all the sages and saints of this world and to each of you divine soul watching today's satsanga. Today we will be studying Sutra number 8 from chapter 1, The Nature of Supreme Devotion or Parabhakti. Uh, commentary is by my Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayananda Ji, and narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. So let's get started. The sutra is Nirodhastu Loka Vedavya Paranyasaha. Again, Nirodhastu Loka Vedavya Paranyasaha. Again, so the meaning is on the contrary, the session of this. Cessation of desires, stopping the desires, consists of the concentration of all worldly as well as spiritual actions. So if you heard, uh, if you have been following the previous sutras, these sutras are building upon each other. So I highly recommend you to uh, follow each sutra carefully. I'm also creating a playlist. So in case you have to go back and refer, it's easier for you to understand. But in the last sutra, we had talked about uh, we should give up desires and uh, instead build parabhakti and how we do that and here um, sage narada is uh, kind of guiding us how to purify ourselves because he understands it's not easy this world is full of lures and temptations and things and so how should we go about doing it is, is explained in this sutra so please do take notes and uh, and uh, this is a serious study. This is not just a casual um, browsing experience. This is for serious uh, students who want their devotion to grow, who want to feel and touch God realization, who want to walk on the holy path. These wonderful scriptures are written by highly advanced sages and saints who have actually attained this experience. So if you also follow it with uh, sincerity, you will make substantial progress but you have to have the basic qualities of love humility compassion and dedication respect etc so um, let's explain the sutra in de detail nirodha means cessation of desires and they should not give one the idea of fighting with desires you cannot just suppress it and and just like diets never work eventually the urge kicks in and you want to eat a lot the same thing is happening to our desires also we cannot be all wound up and uh, be unhappy that oh now i have to practice brahmacharya or celibacy and how will i uh, i you know and uh, and we are frustrated frustrated by that that won't work if we are if we have that attitude we are not going to succeed so sage narada is kind of guiding us slowly towards uh, this knowledge this divine knowledge that we cannot fight with desires we have to uh, and swamiji guides us very beautifully this uh, three way process anytime you want to improve upon a habit um, that or increase a virtue or reduce a vice it is to suppress uh, substitute and sublimate suppress the bad desire substitute it with the good desire and then practice it for a while where it sublimates and it takes on the new form that's the only way there is no other easy way for um, changing our habits so if we have a desire for um, you know anger like we get angry frequently then what we should do is um, sublimate it with love at that time, drink some water, think of something pure, think of your favorite vacation, etc. And then slowly sublimate it, practice it more often where your mind starts to enjoy that experience rather than the angry experience, which almost always makes you regret later. So that's the, the process of uh, suppression, sublimation uh, and uh, 
substitution. So Sage Narada here explains that a para bhakta spiritualizes or consecrates all his actions, whether worldly or spiritual. So Sage Narada is saying such an important thing. Many of us think that spirituality is only when we are meditating or only when we are praying in our temple or when, or when we are doing something holy. But here Sage Narada is saying, no, it is in all your actions, everything, worldly as well as as spiritual so it has to be fully handled in order for us to understand it better it's not just a once a week exercise it's a 24 7 process it has to purification means we are purified all the time not just when we are sitting and praying see all actions can be divided into three main categories there are biological actions and this replace, uh, relates to your physical needs and body eating sleeping blinking uh, um, breathing etc the second one are your worldly actions the actions you do to earn money for example which is to keep your job to pay your bills to acquire wealth and then um, uh, do those kind of things for money and the third one is called dharmic or vedic actions and these are whatever your dharma or your uh, internal essence teaches you with the money you acquire you um, can direct it towards uh, education religion philosophy development of artistic talents building hobbies ethical perfections etc after all why do we earn money because we want to do something with it and we want to uh, find fullness so this these include a performance of good deeds heavenly enjoyments purity of hearts so these are the spiritual disciplines that we can do by repeating a mantra study of scriptures meditation all this comes into the dharmic or vedic actions so these are the three it is impossible for a person to exist without action bhagavad gita very clearly explained this explains this again and again therefore one must perform virtuous actions with a spirit of increasing surrender to the divine will. So we should not have any expectation when we do virtuous actions. We should do them for the good of humanity and with sharanagati. Sharanagati means increasing dedication to God. So when we, uh, having renounced attachments, expectations of fruits, one who performs actions as an offering to Brahman is not touched by sin, even as a lotus leaf is not touched by water. Yogins performing actions by body, mind, intellect and senses, renouncing attachment for the purification of the heart alone so lord krishna is saying this i will um, let me digress here and read you that uh, uh, sutra or the, those shlokas it's chapter 5 shloka number 10 and 11 so if we go to chapter number 5 and uh, shloka number 10 and 11 so shloka 10 is Brahmanyadhaya karmani sangatyaktva karotiya lipyate na sapape na padma patra vimam mivambhasa. And shloka number 11 Kaena manasa buddhya kale kevalai rindri airapi yoginaha karma kurvanti sangatyaktva. So this is what um, the English part meaning of these two shlokas that we just chanted. Listening to shlokas in Sanskrit is also very auspicious and helpful because it is considered the Devani. This is the original text of how it was written. So it means... Uh, जो पुरुष सब कर्मों को परमात्मा में अर्पण करके और असक्ति को त्याग करके कर्म करता है, वे पुरुष जल से कमल के पत्ते की भांति पाप से लिप्त नहीं होता। Whoever does actions offering it to God and without attachment, so you offer it, then he becomes like a lotus flower. The water coming on the lotus does not affect, the water goes back into the lake. Even though the lotus is growing in marshy grounds, it blossoms and it faces the sun. So that is the essence of this uh, shloka number 10, chapter 5 of Bhagavad Gita. And shloka number 11, 
कायन मनसा बुद्ध्या केवल ऐरिंद्री ऐरपी योगिन कर्म कुरवंती संग त्यक्तवात्म शुद्ध है मीनिंग कर्म योगी ममत्व बुद्धि रहित केवल इंद्रिय मन बुद्धि और शरीर द्वारा भी अशक्ति को त्याग कर अंतकरण की शुद्धि के लिए कर्म करते हैं सो योगी इज पीपल हु आर सीरियस एस्पायरेंस वट दे डू इज दे गिव अप द मी एंड माइन मेंटेलिटी एंड दे कंट्रोल देयर सेंसेस माइंड इंटेलेक्ट एंड बॉडी एंड देयर अटैचमेंट टू दीज थिंग्स एंड दे आर डूइंग एक्शन फॉर वॉट फॉर प्योरिफिकेशन internal purification and this is what uh, swami ji and uh, sage narada are guiding us here in this sutra as, as well so it's important to touch the deeper nuggets so we can get the full immersion experience of what the sages are trying to do so this this is why i read you those uh, shlokas sometimes i use hindi as well so then i can um, translate the meaning and you can understand it and some people who follow hindi will understand it also nyasa consecration is intimately linked to these spiritual developments nyasa means purification so for that we have to um, attain vairagya vairagya means dispassion um, second is sanyasa um uh, which is renunciation of the ego sense and it can be mental sanyasa is a complicated uh, confusing term there are sanyasis who are actually like myself who are swamis who have given up their life for spirituality uh, but uh, anything we do uh, that with purity is truly sanyasa uh, giving up renunciation the ego sense in this context it is saying that and then ishwar pranidhana means surrender to god we are giving ourselves to god and atmanivedana is dedicating one self to god through self efface effacement so basically we uh, start to uh, integrate or dissolve into god is a better word we just dissolve ourselves and merge into god atmanivetana which means we become um, directly connected with god if we are going to touch to the para bhakti level of these surrender to god is the predominant feature of nyasa surrender ishwar pranidhana that is very important it's also one of the um, yoga sutras of patanjali in one of the Uh, yamas and niyamas he talks about it so devotional scriptures abound with illustrations of devotees who attained divine grace once they were able to surrender themselves to god without the slightest re- reservation so once you give yourself to god god comes and protects you and there's a story in the shrimad bhagavatam bhagavatam mahapurana it's a very famous uh, itihasa and it's uh, also called the fifth veda and it's a story about a big king uh, Uh, elephant uh, in the forest his name is king gajendra and very powerful big elephant lots of herd he has and then one day he goes in the river for a bath and he is attacked by a crocodile and the crocodile holds gajendra's one foot and drags him deep into the water because in water crocodiles are very strong so he drags him where he would drown so gajendra fought and fought with the crocodile for a long time but to no avail he would bring him to the shore but the cro- crocodile would drag him again even his all his frightened elephants were looking on the banks but none could help what could they do he is stuck in the water when he ultimately realized he was going to die king gajendra uh, elephant he surrendered himself wholeheartedly to the divinity in the form of vishnu there was a lotus flower nearby so he plucked that with his um, trunk and he offered it to lord vishnu as an offering thinking he is about to die and he sought some help immediately lord vishnu destroyed the crocodile with his discus and uh, gajendra was released that is the essence of the story but to give you the allegorical meaning these stories are allegorical so you even the ramayana mahabharata all these things have mystic meanings uh, hidden and you need sages and saints and our guruji swami ji does a fantastic 
fantastic job um, with his uh, mysticism uh, examples, mysticism of Ma uh, Ramayana, mysticism of Mahabharata, mysticism of Bhagavatam, for example. So if you are a serious aspirant, you should um, go to yrf.org and there you can study more about Swamiji and all his uh, great work he has done over his lifetime and uh, about almost every subject. This, as I often remind you, this is the this is the book we are currently um, not the book. It's the scripture we are currently studying. Uh, it's called uh, Narada Bhakti Sutras from a commentary by Swami Jyotir, Jyotir Mahananda Ji and the Yoga of Divine Love. So like this, he has written many, many books and I am just his humble servant working on this mission to guide souls to so that they can come on the path of spirituality. It is called Nishkamya service. It is totally selfless. And um, uh, the idea is to give you these tools. So if you want to go deeper, you can go and enjoy them deeper. But in this case, um, these are the, the paths that uh, Guruji is guiding us with about divine love. And we were just talking about the Gajendra Moksha. So then uh, the allegorical meaning of the story is the individual soul is the elephant king that has entered in the lake of the world process. See, pursuing the pleasure of the senses, which is the bath. Even though its foot is caught by the crocodile of mortality or death, uh, it continues to fight through numerous embodiments. And that's what happens to us. The soul in us never dies, but we continue changing bodies. But when it finally realizes the futility of worldly pursuits, it develops devotion to the divine self who brings about termination of the cycle of life and death. So the discus thrown on the crocodile is the indication of self-realization, mukti, you attaining that eventual goal that we are striving for and the cessation of all forms of misery. Because while the world is the, the crocodile, it's holding us by our foot and therefore pleasure and pain will continue to alternate. We don't get a total break and then eventually we have to die. So from that that perspective we have to understand that uh, developing divine bhakti and divine grace becomes our way out of this situation surrender to god is the secret of success in yoga ishwar pranidhana that's very important so we should never think we have intellectually uh, become very smart we know many shlokas we can read the bhagavad gita all these things are only to inculcate humility and love inside of us so the more we learn the humbler we should become and if that's not happening then we should know that we we are being guided improperly or we have false knowledge if our ego is expanding something's wrong patanjali maharishi says however one cannot surrender to god just by adopting the sentimental attitude you cannot just say oh god i am thine i have surrendered and i am understanding the falsity of the ego that is only theoretical knowledge you have to apply it bring it make it practical make it uh, a living experience only then so the sages and saints have kind of warned us just like when you see uh, 50,000 volts caution you immediately get scared you don't go there because you know that you can quickly die if you touch a live wire or whatever and then there is this big sign so we should be very careful when these sages and saints give us some cautionary remarks or give us some white guidance to be aware of we should take it to heart and work it very carefully so true surrender is attained by the integration of emotion reason action and will in our personality these are the four strings of the veena that god has served Swati plays um, reason, action, emotion, and will. And our Guruji guides us that it is karma yoga, bhakti yoga, dhyana yoga, jnana yoga. These four three four things make up integral yoga, which means karma, selfless service, bhakti, devotion, dhyana, meditation, and jnana, reading scriptures and knowledge of the scriptures. So when we blend the four, divine music plays.
See how beautifully it's integrated. A devotee infuses the spirit of surrender into all his actions. He develops the attitude that I am an instrument in the hands of God. You become part of the divine channel. And it's God's will that directs me to various actions. So even the self-effort that I'm doing is coming from his grace. So we don't give ego any opportunity to raise its ugly head. Every action is a form of adoration to the divine self, a delightful effort to please the divine beloved. So that's really um, uh, the way. And how do you do Atma, divine surrender or uh, Ishwar Pranidhana, uh, dedicating yourself to God? It comes through six steps. Again, like I said, maybe a notebook will be helpful because you may just listen to it and then later you will always forget it or it's easy to forget. But if we are walking on this path, the, these chapters and nuggets are full of uh, divine wisdom and um, taking notes would be a helpful idea for all of us. Uh, the first one, these six steps, uh, one is called Anukul Sankalpa. Anukul means uh, um, a devotee aspires to experience the sweetness of divine surrender, something that is in um, agreement. Second one is called Pratikulya Varjana. Pratikul means something that should be turned away from. So he turns away from all that is contrary to the development of devotion. He asks himself, will I be happy going to that party where I'll people will be drinking and just making merry and intoxicating themselves or will I be happy uh, going within and enjoying the nectar of peace so those are the kind of decisions you will have to make on this path if you are a serious aspirant so he turns from evil association and he removes anger hatred jealousy lust greed pride ambition all emotions and states that oppose the unfoldment of divine sentiment so Whatever will help your divine sentiments grow, those are the ones you should focus upon and whatever hinders it, stay away from that. <laughs> That's what the meaning is. Maha Vishwas means you develop unshakable faith in God and his plan through creation, which means you genuinely believe in God's plan. You are seriously working towards it. And Karpanya means he is unable to deviate from the path of devotion. You are now firmly footed. Just as a miser limits his mind to his wealth, he always thinks of money. So too a devotee centers his mind on God at, at all times. So if a miser can be successful in thinking about wealth we should be successful in thinking about god and the fifth step is called gopritva uh, avaran gopatritva avaran which means he has a secret relationship with god it's uh, not visible to everybody a stream of divine feeling flows on in the depths of his heart so he feels he uh, the coolness and the bliss that comes from within him and the last uh, sixth step is called atma Nikshepa. Finally, he experiences the joy of self-effacement. How is that joy expressed? Just like a cloud that dissolves into the sky. While the cloud was existent, it could see itself separate from the sky. But the minute it is dissolved, it merges into the sky and is full of bliss. That is, and uh, or the other example, like a river, he communes with the ocean of divine love, just like the river that has merged into the ocean. All this was his become the possession of the divine self. Whatever he owns, whatever he has, whatever he does, he does it with the devotion to God, including his body, mind, senses, intellect and soul. So this is the highest form of nyasa or concentration. You see how deep these things are. So that's why these sutras are longer. And um, so far, I'm not going to restrict myself anymore to just 10 minutes or under because we cannot do it. We have to do justice to sage Narada, sages and saints. And uh, so whatever sutras, if they're shorter, I'll keep them short. But if they require explanation, I will do a full-blown satsanga because I want you to be able to listen to them again and enjoy this nectar whenever you need to. And also to do justice to the explanations. Otherwise, uh, I don't want to sacrifice uh, the nectar of quality over speed. So I hope you understand that.
that. The effacement of the ego sense is the secret of renunciation. If we are truly, um, we want to be a renunciator, sannyasi, or a walk on the holy path, we have to let go of the ego. And that is the hardest part to do. That is on, that's where the purification is required. When this is brought about, a yogi becomes established in renunciation. As soon as that happens, we are now firmly footed. So as long as the ego sense remains intact, good actions lead to heavenly enjoyments. You will get success. You will become worldly affluent. You will have many things and also heaven and all. But you will not get liberation. You will keep cycling back through the cycle of life and death. So this is, um, which means he he hellish and heavenish experiences will continue. So when spiritual movement is directed towards the effacement of the ego, like the river wanting to merge into the ocean or the cloud that wants to merge back into the sky, when that happens, one treads the path of true nivritti. Nivritti means the path that leads to the cessation of the world process. That is the path that we want to follow, the path of divine love, the path of divine wisdom. And uh, the actions that take the form of karma yoga, all the actions we do are to attain purity of our heart and thereby to attain um, spiritual union with the divine self. That's what we want to do. And a devotee lives in the spirit of following, um, there's an ancient prayer called Kai Navacha Manasendri Eirva Buddhyat Manavat Prakrte Sobhavat Karomi Yagyat Sakalam Parasmai Narayanayati Samarpayami. What that means is that whatever I do with my body, with my speech, with my mind, intellect and senses, whatever I do, led by the modes of Prakriti or nature, the three modes of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, I hereby completely surrender myself to Lord Narayana or the Supreme Divinity. So that was the essence of this Sutra, Sutra number 8. And I hope you are enjoying the deeper meanings and explanations of these sutras because they are profound. It's talking about divine wisdom or Parabhakti. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tat Sat.